In this video, we just part 11 of how to create a custom candlestick chart in ChartJS. We're going to focus on the crosshair. As you can see here, we have these dotted lines here that will nicely match. As you can see as well, the mouse cursor changes the moment we hover over a bar as well. And if you look very carefully, if we're on the red bar, it highlights the closing point here. And if we're on the green bar, it highlights the closing point at the very top, which is correct. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's continue on and look at which part we need to adjust now. First of all, we want to create these crosshair lines that will have like a dotted line from left to right and top to bottom. And that line should match with the closing value. So if the closing would be C, as you can see here, for example, 175, the line should be here. But if you're on the red bar, the line should start down because that's the closing value. Next, what I want to do is I want to change the cursor that the moment we hover over it here, the cursor converts as well into a crosshair cursor instead of a default cursor. So we have these two items here, and this is very similar to what the Yahoo Finance chart has. So I thought that's a quite nice feature to implement. So let's go down here, and what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to create a new plugin somewhere down let's go here all right so we have the custom scale we have everything here and then here we're going to say here now the crosshair plugin so we're going to copy that scroll up here and then i'm going to say here slash slash crosshair plugin block and i'm going to say a constant crosshair equals id equals crosshair comma and then we're going to say here uh, when would we like to draw this well in this case i want to make sure that the crosshair lines and the dotted line should be on top of this bar that will mean that after the data set has been drawn we will draw the cross here so we're going to say after data sets draw then we're going to say a chart comma then we're going to say arcs and plugin options so once we did this then what we're going to do here is we're going to create here a if statement and this if statement will basically measure one thing is the tooltip being triggered yes or no if it is then we want to show those dotted lines or crosshair lines. And if it's not, then we don't want to show those lines. It's as simple as that. So if you're hovering here, nothing happens, of course. But if you hover here, the trigger comes. So that, that is basically the trigger we're going to create here. So I'm going to say here, if active, And basically what this does is basically track if it's active. And if this is true, so we're going to say end chart dot tooltip dot underscore active dot length so we want to have those two triggered so once we have this what this truly does is it will trigger something so let's say here console log and just say yes if i save this refresh open up developer tab and then if i hover over it you can see here we see the yes and i can see a lot of other items so let's remove all of those one one uh, 212 and we have another one is 53 well that's ours so 212 can be removed let's look at that 212 that is this moving average i say refresh now hoover there we are so you can see here this triggers and what is this here this is 38 308 so let's remove 308 as well save refresh so now if we trigger here now we only have the yes item so beautiful so this works and it recognizes the item. So let's go back here. And now we can just start to work on this. So what I want to do here is basically this. I want to create, here, of course, a uh, object destructuring. And if you don't understand what an object destructuring is, uh, look in the description box and get the video understanding object destructuring in chart.js. So we're going to say here, brackets equals chart. And what we're going to do here, which one do we need? We definitely need the CTX. We might need the data. So we're going to put the data in here. We will get the tooltip as well. Get the chart area, colon, and I'm going to say here, top, bottom, comma, left, right, width, height. Well, we don't need probably all of them, but just in case. And again, here, get the scales. I am not certain about this one, but let's put it in there. Who knows? We can always remove them afterwards. So then what I want to do is I want to draw the item for that. I'm going to say constant and active point. This constant is basically the tooltip here. And 
if you look at this you might say if we move this up we could shorten this and then the answer is yes so maybe we can just do that one put it in here we can just say here instead of this charge is a tool tip here just shorten it so that is a bit more better all right so once we have this here so we have here the active point and then this active point would be tool tip dot underscore active and then here index zero so this is the one we want because if you have index zero it would mean we're then showing a tooltip itself there could be more if there would be like a line or lines that are stacked on top of each other then you have multiple tooltips or basically multiple tooltips being active or one tooltip is active but the data will be merged together that's basically what i want to say but in this case, it's always just only one tooltip being shown because all these bars should be independent of each other, of course. That's the most logical structure. So then what I want to do is here, what I want to say here, CTX up, begin path. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to draw the item. For this, I want to have what we call dotted line. So I'm going to say CTX dot set line dash. And for the dotted line bracket, I'm going to say three comma three. So three pixels, solid black or whatever color it is and three pixels of white space so then what i want to do is i want to say here the thickness of the line ctx that line width and we make this one twelve two pixels that should be more than enough and it's easy to spot next ctx dot stroke style to give it a proper color and for this i'm going to use the default chart js color which is if you look here up Let's grab this one here. I don't have to explain it anymore. I guess I already mentioned it multiple times. So once we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to start to do the color, sorry, not the color, but the position. And I'm going to say a CDX dot move to. And this move to here will have, let's say, an active point, which is basically the position of that one. And then I'm going to say a dot element dot x. That's the x and y value and this is the first one so if it's active basically we're going to go if we're active here it's in the center this basically this center here that we grab and for the y value because i want to have the line starting here but then up or down or from up to down so we start here with a top so then we have the move to and then we're going to say here ctx at line two and remember the line two is the preparation of drawing while the move to would be the pencil with what it would be the starting point of the pencil in this case would be there going down to here to the bottom so you can see here we only probably need the bottom and the top well maybe we need the left and the right as well what i want to do here then is i'm just going to grab all of this put it in here but then we say here bottom so once we have this let's say a ctx out stroke to draw the item save refresh all right, so if we move over, look at this now. Of course, you might say, what's going on? Why everything suddenly is triggered? Because we have a begin path here. We have to have eventually a CTX dot close path. And, well, if I saved it, let's see if that works. All right, so you can see this is the only one that is always giving me a confusion because it doesn't really work here. So what I'm going to do here, normally close path would be working, but doesn't. What I'm going to say here as well, I'm going to copy this, put that in here, and then don't put in here like in the beginning i thought this would be perfect you say this three and zero but don't do this just make this array completely blank if i save that this will work the other option works in google chrome but apparently in firefox or in other browsers it might not work so this is the best option just say here an array with no value so just go to do default solid text so we have that and if we do this i'm not sure if that will work that works as Oh, I guess that doesn't work. Sorry. So we don't do that one. All right. You can see here, this all works. So now what I want to do is from left to right as well. So then what I'm going to do here is we have here the close path. We have all of this. I'm going to say here, again, a begin path. And what I can do here probably is you can just cut this out, put it up here. And uh, this one as well, because these are all connected to each other. So what we're going to do here. You can just copy this and maybe we could even fine tune it all together but i will leave it for now and well maybe i'll later on we maybe can make a nice function to make it dry because we have now double code here so what we're going to do here then is exactly the same except well i want to start here at left 
and this one should be at the right side. And then what I want to do here, and this is very important, this is not anywhere top and bottom, and you might say, well, we just need to get here this dot y. And this is normally the perfect solution, but if I save this, ignore that one, you can see here, look what's happening. It will always get the very top of it where the tooltip is being positioned. Exactly the same as the tooltip position. I don't want this. Why? This here should be up only if it's green. If it's red, it should be at the bottom. So what I need to do is I need to get the value of the closing value, which is the C value, for example, here, 1.40. So that is this value down, while the open was 150. So what we're going to do here is we're going to adjust this one. And how do we do this? Well, we're going to look into the tooltip itself. And the tooltip consists of a lot of valuable information. And more specifically, it's basically the data, the active point, uh, well, the tooltip data points. So let me just show you. We're going to hit tooltip, save, refresh, open up developer tag. All right, so then you can see here a lot of information. And let me just increase the size of that. That's easier to read. So then you can see here we get all of this, but this is all string values. Don't touch this. This is not what we want. We want to go here to the data points with an S. Then click on this, you get all the information here, and we get here the raw data or the parse data. And what I just want is the raw data and one of the closing values. So if I hover over this, what happened here, you can see here, data points with capital P, index zero, dot raw, dot C. So that's the one I need. So we're going to do exactly that. So what I want to do here is, we say dot data points, index zero, dot raw dot c if i save this let's see what happened now then if i go here we get 1.1 which is always the closing value no matter what so you can see this works already nicely and our data is all nicely connected so we're going to copy this we'll cut this out but then what i want to do is i want to change this here i'm going to say here y dot get pixel for value and the reason i'm doing this is because the y here comes from the scale so apparently we do need the scales and i was crashing if we needed it but we do so then we put it in there there we are then of course copy this put it in here as well save that refresh and i think i forgot a parentheses here you can see here we need two parentheses here because of this one and there save that refresh now if we hover there we are this works all very very nicely there we are all right so we have this and what i want to do is i just want to make a function out of it because i feel like it's kind of ridiculous we have double code here so what i'm going to do here is function i'm going to say here lines and i'm going to say here the uh the values and i guess here the x line i'm going to say here the y line and probably because you can see here x line and y line what i want to do is x line start i guess or the start line maybe we can just say that start line uh start x that should be better and i'm going to say here and x or we can say here start y comma and x and and y the reason i'm doing this is because then we can put in here and these are just we can just copy and paste them later on here so if i cut this out put it in here we have that then what i'm going to do here go and say your lines put in the variables just in this order because this is the starting x and starting y we have that like that put it in there comma do again here get this one put that in there send my column here and then what i'm going to say here is just copy this all of these here put them in there and of course this one as well so if i do this i just save this refresh all right interesting it doesn't work let me double check what's going on here all right i forgot to copy paste properly 268 so 268 here my apologies that should be done correctly all right move it and you can see it works nicely so now what i want to do is i want to do exactly the same for the second line and then we are basically done with the first part. And then we still need to make cursor quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to copy this one here. And make sure that we have the parentheses included. Here I forgot to put the parentheses here. Because of this. 
then here again put that in there so then we're going to delete this save refresh hoover there we are so you can see here behind the scenes we did a lot of changement changes but visually nothing changes on the chart but this is nice now i want to change the mouse cursor and it's a quick fix so i'm going to remove this and then we have this if statement here and this if statement says only if the tooltip is active so what i'm going to do here then is i'm going to say here chart.canvas because that's the chart object and dot canvas and then i'm going to say here dot style dot cursor and then i'm going to say here if we are within this so if the tooltip is active the cursor changes to a cross here cursor like that and then we do here else and the else is very simple exactly the same let's let put a space there and then here we're going to copy this and then i'm going to say put this back to default save this refresh now we will hover over there we are you can see here the cursor changes and if i move away it goes back to original state beautiful so now we're done with this and i think what we really should have here i saw that as well that was very nice for in the yahoo uh, financial chart is that we should see on this side here maybe the closing value as a quick item to highlight and i think that would be a very nice addition here you see here this one that's been instantly shown here but maybe we can move these values here to that side as well so that will be the next video we're going to focus on the labels on the side here